Hi everybody, this is Don Dixon and I'm real thankful you decided to join me today. I'm going to tell you a little story today. Uh, our master class has been discussing over the last few weeks uh, all of the virtues of trolling and the important part that trolling plays in successful fishing. I've used a bunch of examples and shared a lot of stories with you. But something came up. I was I thought we were done with our discussion on trolling, but something's happened over the last few weeks that I felt I just had to share with you. And uh, so today, I'm going to tell you a little story that's going to really end our discussion for now about trolling. And the next time we get together, I'll be uh, talking about and opening the discussion on casting. Not only casting the shallows, but casting deep structure, most importantly, casting deep structure. Uh, so, all that being said, let's get started. Let me tell you this little story that happened not too long ago. Uh, actually, over the last two weeks. But it really started about three years ago. My oldest son, who you've seen some pictures of him when he was three and four years old, catching bass, five and six and seven. And at age 12 and 14, they were catching big 10-pound walleye, he and his brother, and they both caught muskies. They, they've caught a lot of fish. But my oldest boy never really, uh, I mean, he, he's a good fisherman, but he wasn't Don Dixon Jr. going to take over and teach fishing all his life. He had a life. He went and uh, he went to Stetson University, got his undergrad there, and got a master's degree there, and he's been working in the Lake County school system. He's an assistant uh, principal, and he's been working there for 20 years. So he's been busy with his life. He's gotten married. He has two sons and a lot of things going on. But he absolutely loves to fish. My boys really are the poster children for exactly what I've been talking about for the last two or three weeks. We're talking about not only take a kid fishing, but catch them fish. And my kids developed their love for the sport by catching fish. Dad was driving the boat. They were holding on, just like I said. Now, my oldest boy got this boat a few years ago. Uh, he found one of my old boats that was up for sale somewhere here in Florida. And uh, it was in pretty rough shape. After all, it was 25, 30 years old. But he bought it right. And unlike his daddy, he's real handy at everything. So he put a new floor in it, <laughs> did some work on the transom. And it was in and between having a family and doing everything that he does and his work and everything else. So it wasn't a full-time job for him reworking this boat. So it took a while and eventually uh, the boat was ready and it's perfect and it, it looked like it's pretty much a new boat. So his boat was finished and we put one of my meters on it. We went out to this little lake that's out, oh I don't know, it's probably a thousand acres maybe. It's, it's only two blocks from his house and it's not thought to be much of a fishing lake but uh, it's just a little lake. And I said let's go test and make sure this meter's working. Let's take it out on that little lake, see if there's any deep water. And he said, well, I was on it uh, once before. I think there's some deep water, but he didn't know because it didn't have a depth on it. So we go out, we take a look, and sure enough, the uh, lake has 25 feet in it. And it's got a long slot of water uh, that's averaging probably about 17 or 18 feet, but at the deepest it's 25, but plenty of deep water. And I said, well, this lake has fish guaranteed. And... <laughs> We're, we're not out there maybe a half hour, and the meter quit working. I said, oh my, wonder what the heck, and nothing we could do, we had plenty, it was getting power, but it wouldn't read. I said, well, obviously, the, the problem is in the transducer. So, I went home and tried to dig out another transducer. I couldn't find another one that looked, that looked like it was ready to go. So I made a call out to the West Coast, to the company who supplies everybody, Lawrence and Humminbird, they, they supply so many of the transducers today. It's a big company. But they remembered my little operation from years ago, actually didn't quite remember, but uh, they, I think, looked up and found uh, some records that they used to deal with us. And uh, the gal who I talked to, she was terrific. Her name is Debbie. She was the daughter of the guy who started that company years and years ago. And she's now the president and running everything. And, and she, as soon as I gave her the model number for the transducers that I was looking for, she said, you must be an old timer. <laughs> I said, yeah, you got that right. She said, I don't think we have any of those anywhere left in stock. 
by any stretch, probably 25 years ago. She said, but I'll look, and if we do, I'll send you some. We don't deal with the public, but I'll send you some. I'd be happy to. I said, that would be terrific. And she was so polite and kind with me, I couldn't even imagine how sweet she was with me about just getting a couple little transducers, you know. And she got back to me by email the next day and said she found some, but she wasn't sure about them. She wasn't thrilled because they, they were so dated that she was just going to make me a couple of new ones, which is what she did. I thought that was terrific. And she said it'd be about 10 days to get those transducers. So I'm getting back to my story now. Because this is what I've been talking about. And now it's demonstrated. I couldn't have made it up any better if I'd been a fiction writer. About what we've been talking about for the last few weeks. Take a kid fishing, catch him fish. Take him trolling. Well, my son's disappointed now. And his two sons are now really disappointed because now... They think they can't go fishing because we got to wait 10 days to get a transducer for the for my meter. <laughs> so I told my son, I said, son, why don't you just take him out to that little lake? We know it's got deep water, so we know we got fish in that lake. Take him out there and do some contour trolling and see what you can find out. I said, just remember back, son. Take him contour trolling like your daddy took you when you were three and four years old. And you you probably catch him some fish. Well, all that deep water, we know there's fish out there for sure. But take him contour trolling and see if you can't catch him a fish, and they'll be happy. So he went out to the lake, took his sons out there, and they started contour trolling. And like it's been going on most of this summer, every afternoon, it's lighting up, sky lightning, all kind of stuff, and start raining. And so they only had a couple of hours on the lake. But they, he started sending me a couple of pictures. He said, well, uh, we lost four or five fish, but we caught 10 or I think it was 10 or 12 fish. Uh, just in a couple of hours, just contouring without a meter. I said, perfect. And the kid's all excited and all of that. Yeah, great. So the next day, they want to go again because, of course, they're catching fish. They're having fun. So they go out again the next day just for a few hours. And he sent me another picture. <laughs> he sent me uh, uh, confirmation that they have caught another 12 or 14 fish that day and lost a few. They're just contour trolling. That's fishing in the shallows. That's all they're doing. And then on the third day, they go back out again. And on the second pass, my son uh, wanted to see if he could uh, feel a 250. So he took one of the rods and he said, I'm going to make this pass with a 250 to see if I can run, find some clear water running the 250. And I want to feel it ticking, so I'm going to make this pass myself. They start off and make this pass and pow, he hits a fish. Here's the picture. It weighed eight pounds. Now keep in mind, folks, he's fishing with his kids. He's fishing without a meter. He just contour trolling. That's all he's doing. And look at the results. They ended up, <laughs> I think in three days, catching something like 30-something fish, including a five-pounder, an eight-pounder, you know, and they've established that this is a good little fishing lake, number one. And number two, the kids are thrilled. They can't wait to go the next time. Now, after a few days, that transducer showed up in the mail. So I called my son. I said, I'm going to bring that thing over there. We have to run out to the lake. I said, I'm busy today. I've got things doing, but I got to, I, I, the curiosity is killing me. I got to make sure this, this uh, transducer is going to work and it turns a trick. So he said, okay, great. I'm free. And my school doesn't start till next week. So I said, okay, great. I run over there, we put the transducer on, we run out to the lake, and it's working beautifully. I said, great, now you're all set. I said, but let's take a quick look at that deep hole that you said you thought was there. And so uh, we run out there and we do a little quick mapping, and we see a definite break line at 10 feet. And look to me, uh, I didn't spend too much time, but it looked like we had a pretty good little break at 15 feet. So my son wanted to check out this deep water slot and hole. Now he had a meter. He wanted to find out really what, what made it work. So he fished a 10-foot break line and uh, for a little bit, especially in two spots that he thought looked really good. They caught a few fish, but they weren't big fish, but they caught a few through my, or he did. And then he established that there was a little break at 15 feet, which is great. In Florida, you find a good break line that deep. And I had seen it the first day, and I said, I'd like to be able to follow that and see if it runs for a distance, because you'd be able to catch a lot of fish off that break line. 
Well, on the first pass he made with a 100 spoon plug on Novo, 16 layers of line, they didn't go 50 yards, bang, bang. They hit a double. His fish was okay. But I want you to see Tiffany's fish. Look at his wife's fish. Seven pounds. First time she ever put a 100 spoon plug. First time she ever holding that trolling rod. Seven pounds. I know a lot of bass fishermen, largemouth bass fishermen, have fished a lifetime, never caught a seven pounder. She catch one in five minutes. Doing what we know we need to do in Florida. But my real reason for telling this story is not to say, look how great my kid is. He is a great kid, by the way. I have two great kids. Uh, but what I was saying a couple of weeks ago, if you take a kid fishing and you catch them some fish, they'll develop an interest. And if that happens, we have a chance of having our uh, fishing, our favorite sport, uh, endure and grow like I want it to grow but only by taking a kid fishing and catching fish well I took him fishing with his brother and they caught fish so they developed a love for the sport now he's taking his kids fishing and now they've developed a love for the sport and you see how this thing can exponentially continue to grow if we just take kids fishing and catch them some fish and all you really have to do with those little ones to get them started, put a trolling rod in their hands, take them contour trolling, just like my son took his sons, my grandchildren, last week, catching all those fish, contour trolling, no meter in the boat. I know there's a lot of fishermen out there, if they knew automatically they could catch a dozen fish with their five-year-old tomorrow, they'd be thrilled with that. Well, when you become a good troller, that just becomes an automatic, almost an automatic thing. It happened all the time, not just once in a while. And then by furthering your education and working deeper on features that you can see, fish like Tiffany's fish, that's what happens. Fish like Donnie's eight pounder, that's what happens. You start running into the big fish. Okay, so as we finish this up, I am thrilled for my little grandsons. That when granddaddy's no longer around, they got a daddy that's taking them fish and taking care of it. They're, 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 they're such sweet kids. I'm so thrilled that now they're part of what I want the whole country to be part of. And that is the family bonding. Not only did Donnie have the kids catching fish now, he's got his wife catching big hog fish. It's just the way it's supposed to be. And daddy couldn't be any more thrilled. Granddaddy couldn't be any more thrilled. And that exact story can happen to you and your family and your kids and your grandkids. All you got to do is... Get on that link, by the way. Go to Buck's Baits and get some trolling rods. Get some trolling rods. And like I say, I think it's the finest one that was ever built. I think it's perfect. It's terrific. I used it the other day. Uh, and get your kids out there trolling. Catch them some fish. And I mentioned to you the last time we talked that I asked Scott, is there any way that he could reduce any price in any way he could help even more than he's already doing uh, to get some trolling equipment out there. And he shared some things with me that I won't share with you, but I can tell you his margins are about that big. And since Buck passed away in 05, and I've been retired for at least that long, uh, kind of retired from the actual doing the business, uh, everything's gone like this. And the interest has gone down. We haven't uh, engage the, the new generation of fishermen. So his business has fallen off and he can't order as much as they used to order, you know, when it even comes to hooks and everything else, very, very expensive. So he shared a lot of things with me. He said, told me exactly what it costs him, for instance, to make a 100, I won't even tell you. But he's selling it to you for, for next to no profit. I mean, it's, it's just crazy. And I know that if we expand our viewers, if we expand our subscribers, if we expand uh, the fishermen that are catching fish out there, uh, his business automatically will start to grow. And I really want to see this. But he called me back a day later and he said, Don, I'm doing everything I can do. I'm going to give all of your people an additional 5% off on everything in the house, whether it's lures, rods, reels, lines, wire, whatever it is, 
an additional 5% off of your already pretty much rock bottom price. So if we want to have success, obviously when it comes to fishing, just like playing golf, we're going to have to spend a little money. But I'm saying spend your money, be smart with that money. Get you a trolling rod. Get you one that really works and works right with the right line and the right lures. Start going about your fish in the right way. And the result, you're going to be thrilled. It'll be the best money you ever spent. So I'm just, I'm just not asking for Scott. I'm asking for the good of Buck Perry's memory, Buck Perry's material. Uh, I don't want to see it all go away. And I really believe in the deepest part of my soul the thing that will salvage it is the fish. Getting young people catching fish. Getting them not only fishing, but getting them catching. And in order to do that, you got to have some of the right equipment. So I'm sort of asking you, if you're going to be serious about this, give Buck Spates a call. Or, you know, on my webpage, there's a link down there at my tackle box. Just check in there. And if you're going to be buying some stuff, use this. It's discount 5. It's a code. It's a discount code. Discount five, and you get 5% off of everything that he's given the stuff to me for, uh, which is already as cheap as you could get it. Just so. to be sure you don't get it wrong, it's not discount the word five, it's discount the number five. Discount five. And order up what you need. And I appreciate you being with me today. I hope you like my story, because it's all true. And it just verified everything that we were talking about for three weeks. It's exactly how it happens. Take your kid fishing. If you did nothing but contour trolled the shallows, Donnie was catching 10, 12, 14, 16 fish a day, every day, just contouring. But the contour in those fish leads you to get to the bigger fish, which is what he's already done with just one day with the meter. So until the next time we talk, Again, follow us on Instagram if you would, and like us on Facebook, and be sure to subscribe to our channel. We appreciate you. Thanks for being with me today, and we'll see you the next time.